Hi, Stingrays. It's me again, continuing on with our Frindle book. Uh, we're going to be on chapter 14, Inside Nick. We just left off wondering uh, what Nick might be feeling or thinking about all the Frindle um, business that had gone on. Since life has kind of gone back to normal now um, for everyone except for him. So he might still have some sort of feelings or thoughts about it. Let's find out what he thinks. Chapter 14, Inside Nick. On the outside, Nick was still Nick, but inside, it was different. Oh, sure, he had lots of great ideas still, but now they scared him a little. For instance, Nick learned in social studies class that people who buy stuff are called consumers. If consumers stop buying, stores and shops and restaurants go out of business. Then, boom, a new idea hit him. <coughs> Excuse me. All the kids loved lunchtime. But the awful part about lunch was the eating part, the school food. And the food was never a surprise. You had to smell it all morning and then go eat it. The food was always bad. Well, thought Nick, the school cafeteria is sort of a restaurant, isn't it? And the students are the consumers, right? And we don't really have to buy our lunches there, do we? Nick could see it all. He would get all the kids to bring their lunches from home every day until the ladies who made the lunches cooked better food. He was sure those women didn't cook food like that for their own families. The kids were the consumers with a dollar and 35 cents in their pockets. And until the food was better, that's where their money would stay. Great idea. Nick was sure it would work, and he got all excited about it. But then, Nick remembered what happened with Frindle. It stopped him cold. All right, why, why do you think Nick is stopping this whole lunch uh, protest idea to have the other kids stop buying food? Why do you think... Nick doesn't isn't going to do that idea anymore. Why do you think he changed his mind? Well, let's find out. He was sure that if all the kids stopped buying lunch, sooner or later someone would figure out that it was all Nick Allen's idea. He would get in trouble. People would write about it in the newspaper. The principal would call his parents. Anything could happen. So for the first time in his life, Nick kept a good idea to himself. He never even told John or Chris. What do you think it means he kept the idea to himself? Right, if you said something kind of like he didn't tell anybody else about it. He just left it in his mind and didn't share it with anybody. You're kind of on the right track there. Have you ever had a really good idea, but then you thought, no, I don't want to share it with everybody. I just want to keep it to myself. That's kind of making a connection between Nick and yourself. Well, Nick never told anyone about his good idea. And that changed Nick. His mom was the first to notice. Are things okay at school, honey? She asked one day in early March. He had seemed kind of down, a little sad, and it worried her. Sure, Nick said, everything's fine. Everything's okay with, or is everything okay with your friends? They haven't been hanging around here very much. Mom, honest, everything's fine. It's winter. Everyone's really busy with hockey and basketball, that's all. And Nick went into his room and he shut the door. Mrs. Granger noticed the change in Nick too. The clever little rascal who had looked her in the eye and said, but I really didn't have a friend with me. That boy, he wasn't in her class anymore. Now, Nick was a quieter, more careful Nicholas Allen, and he, who came into class every day. He did all his work perfectly. He didn't speak unless she called on him and didn't even laugh and joke with his friends like he used to. School would be over in a few months. And it seemed like there was nothing she could do to help him. 
<clears throat> talk about or think about one way Nick's kind of changed since the whole Frindle incident or uh, since the Frindle situation. It's almost like he's really a little more serious, like he's afraid to do something like that again because he doesn't want it to blow up again or something. That's what it, I thought of. What did you think of? Let's keep reading. Toward the end of the year, Nick remembered the letter that Mrs. Granger had asked him to sign on the back when the Frindle business was just getting started. Do you guys remember that letter she gave him? Let's see if I can find a picture of it and show you. Um, the chess game, pretend chess game, was over. So he was expecting to get that letter from Mrs. Granger any day. But all spring it didn't come. So he thought she must have forgotten about it. Nick was afraid to bring it all up again, but he was dying of curiosity. So what do you think it means he was dying of curiosity? What was he curious about? Right, he's wanting to know what, what did she write him? Maybe it's something exciting or scary or cool or new. So, Excuse me. On the last day of school, Nick knocked on Mrs. Granger's classroom door. She was straightening up the textbooks on the bookcases below the windows. Without turning around, she sang out, Come in! Nick said, Hi, Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger stood up and turned to face him. Oh, it's you, Nicholas. I'm so glad you stopped by. I've been meaning to talk to you. And this will save me having to send you a letter this summer. Nick gulped and said, uh, th that's what I came in for, the letter. Mrs. Granger looked puzzled for half a second, and then she said, oh, that letter. Then she paused. You will recall, Nicholas, that I said I would send you that letter when all this was over, and it's not over. It's not? Nick tilted his head to one side and asked, when will it be over? Mrs. Granger smiled and said, Oh, believe me, Nicholas, you'll know when it's over. I wanted to talk to you about something else. She walked across the room and stood about two feet from him. Nick had grown during the year, and their eyes were almost the same level. Nick noticed that the eyes were softer, but just as powerful. I've noticed that you've been very quiet for the past few months. You know, Nicholas, you didn't do anything wrong this year. I know a lot of things happened, <clears throat> and a lot of things were said, and you must have had some difficult days here and there. But your idea was a good idea, and I have been very proud of the way you behaved most of the time. Were you surprised at how Mrs. Granger reacted? Was she mad at him? That's right, she was proud of him. She said she was proud proud of him. That kind of surprised me. Well, Nick was embarrassed, but Mrs. Granger kept on talking. And Nicholas, you have great things to do in this life. I'm absolutely sure you do. And you mustn't let a few hard days trick you into clamming up. Then Mrs. Granger reached out and shook Nick's hand and looked him in the face. Her eyes were turned up brighter than Nick had ever seen them before. She said, Nicholas Allen, I have enjoyed having you as a student. Now you go out there and have a wonderful summer. And I expect to hear remarkable things about you, young man. Mrs. Granger watched Nick start to leave. But before he got to the door, he turned around and said, Thanks, Mrs. Granger. You have a great summer, too. Then he grinned and said, and don't forget to buy some new frindles for next year. Thanks to his little talk with Miss Granger, along with a healthy dose of summer vacation, Nick made a full recovery. He was proud that he'd made up a new word, and he enjoyed thinking about all the commotion it had stirred up. That one little word had made fifth grade a year to remember. Before he started sixth grade, Nick was Nick again. And all through junior high, and high school and college, he proved it. For example, two years later, all the school cafeterias in town were serving delicious food at least four days a week, all because of Nick 
the consumer. And the state superintendent of schools had made a special trip to Westfield to learn why this little town had the most successful school lunch program in the state. And in high school, well, the stories about Nick's other adventures could go on and on and on. But that would delay the end of this story, the one that started when Nick was in fifth grade. Because the end of this story came later, 10 years later. And what was happening to Nick's word during those 10 years? Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. Words don't work that way. Words either get used or they don't. And the word frindle was being used more and more. It was becoming a real word. So why do you think Mrs. Granger said, I expect to hear remarkable things about you, young man. And that word remarkable definitely means special, uh, things that are not common. And so Mrs. Granger, she seems like she's got a lot of faith in Nick. and She's really going to look forward to what he does in the future, bringing his ideas to life. Do you think that helped get Nat Nick back to normal? I do too, a little bit. I think it helped him kind of realize that his gut feeling and his gut reaction to things and his ideas are good ideas and he should pursue them because that's maybe how, you know, his, his superpower is that he's got these great ideas. All right, we'll stop there for today. Good job, Stingrays.